Hi, this is Cameron, and I'm placing this video as an answer to the recent video by X Sphinx X, a known Destiny hater who was originally known on YouTube as X Manos X. And his video is called RE Anti Hate Destiny Fabrications. And although his video is a direct response to Manuela's video, it's in a way a response to all of our anti-hate videos responding to his original video entitled Destiny Fabrications Part 1. So I will just begin by reading a quote and giving perspective and continue in this manner until I've covered all the points that I'll be answering. So at 6 minutes 50 seconds, x Finks begins, quote, the next thing you point out is destiny's first principle, in that we are all one and that everyone has basic needs. I have no wish to argue this except to say that destiny's prescription would destroy freedom and could only be achieved through force, violent and bloody force." End quote. And he continues, quote, Tell me, Manuela, how would you deliver the food to the starving in war-torn areas? Do you not think there are people trying to do this today? Do you think the warlords are simply going to lay down their weapons and control after you have delivered your destiny message? I doubt it. End quote. Now, X Sphinx X has completely misunderstood and misrepresented what is proposed as an equal money solution and how it can be achieved. This is because he refuses to participate with us as an equal, and thus he doesn't do the amount of research equal to what is necessary. And to say that one should go to a war-torn country and deliver the destiny message in order to have the warlords lay down their weapons is obviously not going to work. And this is why we do not propose doing it. We suggest an equal money system as a solution to be implemented over time through political means to eventually solve the root economic inequality in this world. X Finks X must understand and realize that all those who have power in this world have it by means of a monetary system based on a principle that for some to have, others must not have. And this is what we must fundamentally change, and which, when changed, will remove the power that the abusers have to control the flow of resources and food. At 7 minutes 30 seconds, X Finks X goes on to say, and I quote, Another point you make is, in equality, we are included in this principle. So are you saying that equality and oneness ends at the point of receiving basic needs? If this is what it means, then count me out, since I would rather die than simply eat and reproduce. If in equality and oneness, I can't voice my opinions and thoughts on the same level as Bernie Boy, who I might add holds himself as better than everyone else in action and word, then this kind of equality and oneness where I shove food in my mouth but can't speak isn't something I'm interested in. This would merely be trading one form of abuse for another. End quote. Now, X Finx X has again, due to lack of research and self-honesty, misrepresented what has been said time and again as the purpose of an equal money system. Providing for the basic living requirements of all living beings in this world is simply the beginning, baseline purpose of an equal money system. The very fact, though, that the current system does not provide for this is the reason why it is evil beyond all measure, evil from the perspective that the current system is based on our tacit and implied collective agreement as human beings, a system which is perpetuated every day through our daily participation, the only real evil that exists in this world. And it's also quite revealing that X Finx X says that he would rather die than live in a world where everyone has their basic needs met, simply because he has a desire to voice his opinions and thoughts. He implies through these words that he would actually rather continue to let children starve right now and express his opinions and participate in a solution that would, at the very least, end the suffering of billions of human beings, not to mention all the animals that are abused daily for profit. He says that he would rather die than live in a world where the only purpose of living is to eat and reproduce, 
Though, if X Sphinx X were to look at the world as it is, and be honest with himself, he would find that eating and reproducing is actually all there is physically to do in this world. Unless, of course, you have money, in which case there are plenty of fantasies, games, mental realities, and luxuries with which one can pass time here on Earth. Though for the vast majority of this world, which live daily on a mere fraction of what many others in this world earn in an hour through an unequal education and unemployment system, there is nothing else to do except eat and reproduce. Because when one does not have money, there is no time for mental fun and games. The physical quickly becomes the most important point of focus because it's obviously the most relevant to existing. So x Sphinx x is in essence agreeing with what destiny stands for, which is the end of existence as a reality based solely on the pre-programmed functions of eating and reproducing. If only he would let go of his desire to have his own opinions and thoughts. Opinions and thoughts will not change this world, and to say that one would rather... They would want to rather be able to express their opinions and thoughts than give them up and participate in a solution for those who are merely struggling to survive is completely selfish. And it's the very definition of abuse and inequality that we as Destonians say is unacceptable. So we see that the problem is not that X Sphinx X disagrees with destiny per se in principle but rather that he doesn't want to change himself, because that is what it will take. x Sphinx x goes on to make several statements that, when taken together, expose that he's not considered the full context of what Destiny's doing, nor has he attempted to come to any self-honest understanding about how this reality operates at a basic physical level. He firstly states that Destiny has nothing new to say, that it has already been said before, and then that destiny has not changed anything in this world. He then asks, why can't we do anything more meaningful or participate in Band-Aid solutions? We who participate in destiny, and everyone else in this world, live within the context of reality as it currently operates. We realize that in order to have an effect on the current system, we must play by its rules and use its own rules to change it. That is why we, for example, are training ourselves as lawyers, psychologists, educators, politicians, and also we train ourselves through writing daily to be able to participate fully in the political processes that we've all agreed collectively as humanity to be as the proper legal means by which to direct reality. Must we at times participate in the very systems that we say are unacceptable? Obviously, because they have not changed yet. If this world had changed, then destiny would no longer exist. And that's the difference between a Destonian and an abuser like X Sphinx X. The abuser will hold on to his own definitions, limitations, and opinions until the end of time, if possible, no matter what was happening around him, no matter how many had to suffer. A Destonian is only a Destonian insofar as the world requires destiny. Being a Destonian is not a lifestyle, it's a means to an end. And yet one does it for life. Because if life were here, looking at our current situation, life would stop at nothing to make sure this world changed to one that's best for all. Wouldn't you expect that is what God would have done if it had existed now, the final point I would like to address in this video interview is what seems to be an underlying motivation for X Sphinx's, X Sphinx X's hatred of Destiny and its members, and namely jealousy. More than any other point, X Sphinx X brings up Bernard Pullman. And this is consistent across the dozens or more videos he's made speaking against Destiny and equality. He claims that Bernard benefits unequally from financial contributions to destiny, which is a blatant lie. Firstly, X Sphinx X has never had any direct contact with Bernard or the Destiny Farm, and is only making these claims based on his assumptions that destiny is dangerous, which are based on his own fears and jealousies. 
I get it, ex Finks X. You wish that you could be Bernard. And thus you claim that Bernard is doing the very things that you wish you could do. You actually wish that you could be the leader of a group. You wish you could benefit unequally from the money system in this world. And being too weak to admit it, you pretend that this is what Bernard is doing. And that is the nastiness of X Finks X. I can assure you, those who are listening now, that this is not real. I've been to the Destiny Farm. I've met Bernard. I've had actual, real conversations with him. I've seen what he does day in and day out. He doesn't drive around in fancy cars. He doesn't wear fancy clothes. He eats what, he eats what everyone else eats. He shits on the same toilet. Can you say the same about any other leader in this world? The president of the U.S.? The pope? Politicians, religious leaders, athletes, pop stars, corporate executives. X Sphinx X is simply projecting all of his jealousies of not being like every other leader in this world. X Sphinx X has no clue as to who Bernard Pullman really is. I've seen the way Bernard handles conflicts, putting the best interest of the group first, finding solutions to practical problems at the farm, the way he assists each and every one who visits to forgive their past simply by showing us the ways in which we've accepted less of ourselves than who we really are. It takes a lot of humbleness and patience to, although seeing the solution for oneself, to take the time to educate and build a group of people equal in effectiveness to actually make a substantial change in this world. Now, towards the end of his video, X Sphinx X misrepresents a statement that Daryl apparently made about Bernard speaking for the animal kingdom. And X Sphinx X demands that Bernard place himself in a den of lions to prove that he actually speaks for them. And this is entirely missing the point, though. Bernard speaks for the animals, as the animals. He says that he says what they would say if you could actually hear them. He speaks up for them because they have been abused and taken advantage of by humans for thousands and thousands of years. And even if Bernard were able to perform some sort of miracle, what fucking difference would that make? It would not change this world. In fact, ironically, X Sphinx X said, if Bernard would just do this, simply place himself in a den of lions and not get eaten because he can apparently mind control them, then <laughs> he would change his ways and stop speaking against destiny. I mean... He he'd probably become one of Destiny's most ardent supporters because he's really just looking for a reason to believe. X Sphinx X wants to believe in Destiny, and he wants to believe in Bernard. And because Destiny won't give him the satisfaction of belief, he lashes out, just like atheists do when they realize there's no God, and yet they still wish there was. It's simply a symptom of not taking responsibility for oneself and one's world. I mean, you've trapped yourself, X Sphinx X. We know what you are accepting and allowing yourself to be equal to. And the more you speak, the more you expose yourself. And eventually, you'll either end up doing something you'll regret, or you'll start to see what you really are doing, and then there's a possibility for change. But you'll have to forgive yourself, and you'll have to let go of your desire to be the imaginary fantasy of what you believe Bernard to represent in your mind. In the end, it's up to you, and only you. But realize, this world is going to change, with you or without you.